Hey folks, we're gonna we're gonna do something a little bit different today. Obviously, this camera angle is a little bit different. I'm just sitting here at my table, my desk, and frankly, I'm a little bit behind. I've got a bunch of different IMs here. I'll show you. I've got a bunch of different IMs here that I need to unbox and start reviewing ostensibly at some point. But um, I also, you know, I figured I would kind of take this opportunity to do a little bit of a different type of live stream. Uh, I'm just gonna sit here, unbox these things, and throw them up on my measurement rig and produce frequency response graphs of it. That's what this screen is over here for. Um, but that was, that's what this video is gonna be. And it's probably gonna be a little bit longer and a little bit slower and maybe a little bit more boring than my other unboxings. Not that my other unboxings are super exciting, but I think this one's gonna be a little bit more casual, a little bit more laid back, and I'm gonna try and engage, and engage with the live chat kind of in real time rather than leaving it for the end. So if that's not the kind of video you, you want, like I would tune out now, but if you're just chilling Monday afternoon here uh, and you wanna chill with me, I guess let's, uh, let's hang out. Uh, so yeah, let me just make sure everything is operating correctly. Everything like, if you're watching now, this is a, you know, a new situation for me. Let me know, does everything like, everything looks fine. I know the lighting here is definitely not uh, ideal because I haven't really changed my lighting for this setup, but hopefully the microphone works as well. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, here, let's go to the table. These are the, the five different IEMs that I have to unbox. Um, obviously, as I alluded to in the title, I have the new Moondrop Sparks. Uh, this is a true wireless IEM from Moondrop, which um, I actually don't have a lot of information about this. I did see that Critical recently posted his unboxing and measurements of it. So I figured I might as well throw my hat in the ring and do the same. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about this one. I think the price according to Critical is $90, uh, 90 US dollars. I don't see an official listing for this yet, but this is um, this did come to me from Shenzhen Audio uh, and we'll We'll definitely take a look at what comes inside that box. But what else we've got here? Uh, we've got the new BGVP NS9. This is a kind of an interesting IM. I just recently reviewed the BGVP, uh, what was it, the DM8. And that was an IM that I was actually kind of surprised that I liked it as much as I did. Um, it was around 350 bucks, something like that. And I believe that was an eight balanced armature set. Here with the NS9, well, it's nine balanced armatures, no, it's actually, sorry, that's not correct. I think it's seven balanced armatures plus two dynamic drivers. Um, and for that, you might expect it to be more expensive than the DM8, but it's actually cheaper. This is, I think, 170 bucks. Uh, and this comes to me via Hi-Fi Go. Um, I should have added links to all this stuff in the description. In fact, I will do that probably in a little bit, but let's get through these introductions. Um, here I've got the Thea Audio Legacy 4. This is to me via Linsoul Audio. And uh, this one, I believe, let me, let me pull up my notes just to make sure I get this correct. I believe this is uh, a single dynamic driver and three balanced armature set um, from Thea Audio. And then over here, we've got also the Thea Audio Legacy 5. Um, the box is a little bit worse for wear, but yeah, I believe this is the Legacy 5, and this is single dynamic driver and I believe four balanced armature set. And then finally, our fifth IAM that we're going to unbox here. This is one that people ask me about all the time. Uh, you can probably see the name of the item down here on the bottom of the box, but this is the Mangard T. Um, this is probably one of the most requested IAMs. People want me to compare things to. And this is around 300 bucks, and again, via Linsoul Audio. Um, and I haven't before now had a chance to really take a look at this myself, unbox it and, and listen to it. So hopefully we'll be able to address that now. Um, but yeah, those are the five IMs I'm gonna unbox. And honestly, I'm probably, I'm probably gonna leave you guys a little bit suspenseful. Is that okay? Like I, I, think, I think that the Sparks is probably the one that people are the most excited about, but I, 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 I wanna create a little bit of suspense. So um, we're not gonna do that one right away. What we'll probably start out with is the BGVP NS9. Let's wait for a couple more people to get here before we do, we dive into the Sparks. Um, and like I suggested I was gonna do, I'm gonna, let me throw in some links to these um, in the, well, is this camera? This camera's not gonna be any good. You're not gonna see me over here, but trust me, I'm right over here. I'm gonna throw some links to these different products um, 
in the description just so we've got them. Also just to, 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 to do these folks the service, they, they sent me these IMs, so I might as well link to them. BGVP and S9, adding to there, we're gonna add the Mangard T. So yeah, actually, I'm curious, in live chat, let me know what's the order that you want them unboxed. Again, I'm gonna leave the Sparks, um, wait for a few more people to get here, because I think that's the one people are most excited about, but for the rest of them, what are people interested in? Uh, told you this is going to be casual. All right, those are all in the description if anyone's checking it out. But let me um, let me slide my face back into frame um, and catch up with live chat real quick to see if there's any questions up front that people have. Like I promise we're gonna try and do this a little bit more in real time than my typical live streams. Uh, Jure and Recode, welcome to the chat. Appreciate having you here. Jeremy Kiros, what's up? Sala, what's up? How's it going? Alberto, just got here in time. What's good? Not too much. It's, uh, it's Monday afternoon, just chilling. Umar, how's it going? Jeremy, I'm glad you're here to just to chill with me. Time to chill, that's right. Elazar, you're here to chill as well. Let's chill together. Eric from Bangladesh, how's it going? Go to sleep now. Yeah, I hope this video will be available for when you get back. Uh, and DNTR, yeah, I got the new camera angle. I, this is just kind of like, I just set this thing up so that I could sit here and not kind of, I don't know, I don't want to stand up right now. I want to sit down. Um, but I do have my cam my computer screen over here. In fact, this is kind of the other angle that y'all don't normally see this up here can you see it that's my camera that i'm normally talking to and this is the screen that i'm normally chatting to you guys on um, it's down here and then this is just the rest of the studio space you can see my key lighting up here now acting as a very oversized and overpowered hair light um... all right it seems like as suspected the most interest is in the BGVP NS9 and the Mangard T. So as I was planning to, let's go ahead and start by unboxing the BGVP NS9. Um, and let's see, I don't think I'm gonna need a knife for this, but just in case, I'll make it handy. Yeah, let's see what we get inside this box here of the NS9. Fairly lightweight. Aerodynamic. Uh oh, I shouldn't have shaken it. I appear to have shaken everything out of place. But anyway, let's let's take a look. Let's pretend I didn't shake it uh, and, and, and disrupt everything. I think this is not quite right, but I'm a little confused. What did I do? That goes there. We're make, we're make, I'm, it's a good thing this is the casual one because I've already screwed it up. There's a tip down there, I can tell. We'll leave it there, you know what? All right, let's see. Here's what we get inside the box of the BGVP NS9. You get a letter specifically written to you from the president of BGVP. I just made that up, it's probably not true, but it is cool that all that paperwork comes in a little envelope. Uh, a bunch of different paperwork. I don't know what's going on there, but there are your QR codes for the enthusiasts out there. I'm gonna make sure that one is plenty visible. I've never once scanned a QR code in my life. I'm not about to do it today. That's actually not true. I've scanned plenty of QR codes in my life. They seem like they're more useful than they get used. Uh, yeah. All right, so the NS9 comes with a little hard carry case. What's up, El Jefe? Welcome to the chat. Zombie Snail, how's it going? All right, so we get more paperwork. It's good, I was feeling feeling like I didn't have enough. All right, that looks like it's some filters. So um, this might be one of those earphones where measuring it is actually a little bit difficult. Uh, just because there's probably a, 
you know, if there's filters, there's gonna be a bunch of different variations. I'm gonna start with just the stock default variation. Uh, and then probably what I will do is I will update at a later time or maybe, maybe later today when I'm getting even more and more casual. We'll see how casual I get, but um, I'm not gonna make you wait through me measuring every variation of the NS9. At least not for now. All right, there's the cable. Honestly, uh, just up front, like this is actually a pretty nice little cable that comes here with the NS9. Punching on that. BGVP does pretty nice cables. You know, the, the cable that came with the DM9 or the DM8, I didn't love it because of the termination. It had like a, a 2.5 millimeter termination with these snap on um, adapters for 3.5 and 4.4 millimeter. Uh, and here you just get the 3.5 millimeter, which for me is fine because that's all I ever use. And Umar, I see you're saying that the uh, the the NS9 here looks a lot like the FIO FH3, and I think you're right. Just aesthetically, that looks pretty similar. Let me wind this cable up. This is seriously actually a pretty decent little cable. You can tell, well behaved. It's got a chin cinch, which appears to be useful. Nice job, BGVP. Let's see what else we got here. So this, these are the filters that I alluded to. Um, they do appear to be, and let's punch in on that if we can. Um, they appear to be sort of like a screw on type. I'm not gonna pull these out of the bag right now because I'll probably lose them, uh, but I will play around with those later. Again, I'll measure what the difference is that they make to the IEMs. And then obviously you get quite a set of ear tips here from BGVP. Let's take a look at kind of one example of each. Oh my gosh, all right, there we go. I got it out, I'm actually impressed. So these two, well, they look pretty similar. The clear one, the bore is a little bit on the wider side, which is interesting that they call that the base ear tip. And these ones with the slightly narrower bore, they call the vocal ear tip. Um, generally, I associate a narrower bore tip or a narrow bore with a wider or with sort of a brighter, more forward presentation and a narrower tip. Wait, what did I just say? Usually I associate a wider tip with a more forward presentation and a narrower tip with a basier one. Uh, and then you also get some foam tips, which frankly, I'm not a big fan of foam tips, but I know a lot of people out there are. So I guess it's nice that they are included. And then here are the NS9 pieces themselves. Pretty nice, they appear to be all metal. Let's take that tip off and you take a look here. And yep, like I suspected these filters just kind of screw on. Pretty nice little mechanism there. And then you can see inside there are three different uh, kind of channels for the audio. Raise RCs, how's it going? Songram, what's up? Ali Haji and Qatar, what's up? How's it going? Long way away from here. I'm in California, but yeah, nice, nice to have you here. Crayo's nice that it's before school starts. Yeah, where where are you at that school starting? Uh, but yeah, that is the BGVP NS9. Let me go ahead and throw it up on the cable so we can see the completed package. MMCX connectors. Um, but yeah, I'll put it, actually, you know, let me throw it on my head before we do the, the measurement um, so that we can see how these things fit. And hopefully this thing's in focus. I've got a manual focus lens on here. I've got it set to like right here, right? This position I think is where I'm in focus using the hair of my beard as uh, focus peaking essentially. But yeah, here we go. So yeah, I would say fit wise, someone mentioned that these things looked a lot like the FIO FH3 and I would say fit wise, it's actually pretty similar. Um, isolation, not especially strong, but seems decent. Comfort actually seems pretty solid. Can you, can you see there? Yeah, oh, that's actually, it's not a bad little package. I'm not sure what this thing sounds like, but um, for 170 bucks, I, I think I mentioned that. Yeah, it's 170 bucks for this. Wow, yeah, you can't see anything if I do that. I'll put it here. Nope, there it's in focus. Um, yeah, for 170 bucks, that's not a bad little package, but let me box this all up together again um, and then break out my microphone so that we can graph the frequency response of it. Oh, paperwork, I don't wanna. I don't want to forget you paperwork. Can never forget you paperwork. Let's see. Hmm. 
Mike is making weird noises again. All right, let me um, appreciate this is, first of all, thank you for the, the heads up. Let me go ahead and do a little of debugging, which we can do here. Let me throw on my monitors. Up the volume and you are correct. That is crackling. Let me see what I can do. Is that any better? That seems to be a little bit better. All right, I don't know why that happens sometimes. Sometimes you just gotta unplug and plug and unplug it. But yeah, thanks for the heads up. Um, any comments, any, any thoughts on the BGVP NS9 based on uh, that unboxing? Uh, how, how's this look? Are people interested in this one? What are, the, what are people looking for uh, in this kind of IEM? And what are the sorts of things that um, you might be interested in in my review, like what do you wanna know about this thing, right? I can't tell you very much about it right now. We can measure it and we can see what the frequency response is, but um, otherwise I can't really tell you a ton, but here is my microphone. Cool, glad to see them in the chat. Everyone's confirming that everything, the microphone is fixed. And again, really appreciate the heads up on that. But uh, let's, uh, let's throw this thing in here. That seems to be pretty decent there. And then we will punch over here to Morrison here, FH3 looking ass. Yeah, it, it very much looks like an FH3. Um, but yeah, this is uh, RU, this is the measurement software, R-E-W, uh, Room Equalizer EQ, or Room e Equalizer Wizard, something like that. Uh, I'm not good, I'm not good with abbreviations, but uh, this is the software that we use for measuring earphones let's try it at volume level of four and oh my that is a lot of bass let me go ahead and go down to volume level of three just to make sure we weren't clipping because that was pretty close but we'll do one more measurement of that And the other thing I want to check is um, there's usually sort of a peak in the frequency response. Let me punch over here to, or uh, this is my Moondrop S8 measurement that I did right before this video as sort of testing my setup. You can see there's this peak here um, at around 8,000 Hertz. And you're going to see this peak in a lot of measurements and a lot of my measurements, a lot of Krinical's measurements and a lot of other people basically just kind of follow the procedure that Krinical kind of established a standard. Um, Basically, as you move an, an earphone, let me punch over to this, as I move it kind of further into and out of this, uh, this, this coupling microphone, um, it's gonna actually move where that peak appears in the frequency response. So when you are evaluating an earphone based on its frequency response, I would generally just, just take note that this peak right here is very often a lie. Uh, but what we typically try to do is make it so that the peak will always appear there. And here in this measurement, it looks like there's a peak that maybe is starting to form there, but I'm gonna try and push it in a little bit further and see if I can get even closer. Let's set our volume. Yeah, that didn't seem to do too much to my peak position. Maybe if I try it, no, you can see that that peak is now starting to form a little bit more, um, a little bit more definition. Let me throw on a smaller tip because a lot of times that will let me move this thing uh, in a little bit further and move that peak a little closer. Although interestingly, uh, there are no other black tips. There's only one set of black tips that is provided. So I guess I'll throw in the vocal tip. I'm gonna throw in the bass tip because this one looks cooler. The vocal tip's a little weird looking. But um, yeah, what are what are people's first responses to seeing that frequency response graph? Does does that does that appeal to you? Does that make you concerned? And you know, like a lot of things, it's a matter of taste. 
um, what you're looking for. You can see I'm kind of struggling with putting this thing on, this tip on it, just because this bore is actually a little bit wider than, than typical. Um, it was not a problem for me in terms of fit uh, because it is relatively shallow fit. Mostly it was just the ear tip that touched it, that touched my ear. Um, sometimes if there's a wider bore and it goes deep into the ear canal, it can create a little bit of pressure and discomfort, but I don't have that issue here. Actually, why did I just throw the mediums on there? I think I just screwed up, but let's go ahead and measure this thing anyway uh, and see if I'm able to get that. Oh, I put it on the wrong. I'm a genius, guys. I put it on the wrong one. I need to do the left one. This is what happens when we do things casual style. Not practiced. Not a shape. All right, so we got that fitting a little bit deeper. I'm uh, just taking a look at some of the comments. Yeah, Umar, that is definitely a lot of base. I agree. And you know, some people, it's exactly what you're looking for. All right, let's try this once more. And Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, huh. So I, I've, 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 based on this, I think I'm gonna have a lot of graphing to do with this earphone uh, because I threw on that vocal tip and you can see uh, that, that different tip actually seemed to make a pretty significant difference up here in this, uh, looks like sort of 3K to uh, about 6K region. So. Yeah, this is kind of in the vocal region. This is like kind of like the upper range of vocals. Um, usually some emphasis here will give vocals like a bit of a, an edginess to them or maybe like sort of a, a presence on them. So I, I can see how that was what these tips will deliver. Uh, and then you can see that my, my bump here is closer to around 8K, but still not exactly on it. I think for now, we're gonna go, we're gonna stick with this. And I'm actually gonna keep both of these measurements because I think um, NS9 stock, and then I'm gonna name this one NS9 vocal. I'm actually pretty shocked to see that big of a difference, honestly, just from a tip change. That is not necessarily typical. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and hide those. Let's go back to the table. You know what? Let's go back to my dumb face. Um, and let me throw this stuff all back into a box and we will move on to IEM number two, which everyone seemed to be interested in the Mangard T. So I guess we'll move on to the Mangard T. I don't know why, uh, not that it's like any more of a normal word, but for some reason with the Mangard T, I, whenever I, I saw it in writing, I kept imagining that the, the name was Mangrid not mangard um, and then i looked at it more carefully and realized it's mangard oh okay um, at least neither of those appear to be a word to me uh what victor you're asking you saying uh miss you're a bit late and missed the unboxing but you see this has two dynamic drivers is there any benefit to having two of them i mean it's the same thing with having uh, multiple drivers in any case you can basically have a single driver dedicated to producing a very specific frequency response and then you can um, or a very specific section of the frequency um, the frequency range let's say you might have one dynamic driver handling uh, let's say 20 hertz to 100 hertz and then another one handling 100 to 300 i don't know that that's what they've done but um, ostensibly the benefits of it is i i guess you get more control over it as sort of an earphone designer builder engineer um, and you can get more specifically the sound that you're looking for um, there might also be some other benefits in terms of um, it, it might have an effect in terms of like the the sense of layering and separation but i i as someone who's never built an im myself i'm not certain about that jeremy kira saying that bass is nuts yeah let's um go back over here and i will just remind you that this is Actually, pretty, I'll go, this is the vocal one again. Um, and then for reference, the Moondrop S8, which is not bass light. You can see that the bass uh, on the 
on the, the moon drop comes up to a little bit below the peak in the upper mid range, whereas on the NS9, the bass is definitely way above the vocals, which some people are into. Uh, check Tomas saying, based on appearances and build, I would like to buy the Moondrop SSR because I think the build and the shape is stunning and tiny. It's the form factor of that is one of one of the reasons I love that earphone for sure. I get it. Oh, good. Uh, Jake, I'm, I'm glad to hear that I'm not the only person that thought it was man grid, man, man grid and not man grid. Uh, asking me if I'm using a wider lens. Yeah, I think so. Normally I use a 20 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds camera. So like the equivalent of about 40 millimeters. That's what's on this camera up here on this camera. I've got a 28 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. So 28 millimeters. So basically from 40 millimeters normally to 28 millimeters. Yes, it is a little bit wider, quite a bit wider. Actually, I'm also quite a bit closer to it. That wasn't comfortable at all. It wasn't even in focus. Why did I do that? Um, all right, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and crack into the Mangard T, which again, as a reminder, shout out to Linsoul Audio for sending this to me. Price on this one is around $300. And uh, I believe it was a single balanced armature, wait, no, sorry, single dynamic driver. And oh no, where did, where did, where did, where did my cheat sheet go? I had a cheat sheet up. Hold on, let me pull up my cheat sheet real quick. All right, cheat sheet is here. All right, single dynamic driver and six balanced armatures. I hope that was uncomfortable. Alice says it's cool if you're late, that's fine. All right, let's take a look and see what's inside this box. Um, got magnets, always a big fan of magnets. Let's see what we have here. We've got Zen's pursuit of high cost performance sound. Interesting that they would put high cost in their marketing. Interesting, 300 bucks, so definitely not a cheap I am, but there's also much more expensive I am, so. Oh, and I could have just, man, I was looking for my notes for the cheat sheet to find out what the driver configuration was, and it's right there underneath the lid. Could have just done that, but oh well. Let's see, put that to the side. We got a nice little carry case here. I have a feeling some items are gonna be stored inside that, and then pull this foam to the side. Um, Got some paperwork. We've got some tips. We've got some more tips. We've got an airline adapter. We've got a 3.5 to a quarter inch adapter. It's, isn't that, hmm. It, this is a 6.3 millimeter, sorry, 3.5 to 6.3 millimeter connector. It's interesting that almost nobody refers to the 3.5 millimeters like an eighth inch jack, although you could. Um, but for some reason, I always think of this as a quarter inch jack. So basically mixing my metric and my standard measurements. Some, you know, silly American stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's say, take a look at these tips. Uh, we've got a couple of different sets of foams over here. We've got a small and a medium size, which is cool. Not always do you get two different sizes of foams. Almost, almost typically, or almost always, you will get just one size. And then over here, the ear tips, Curiously, look kind of like KZ ear tips. They've got like the, uh, they call them like a bullet style or something like that. That's interesting. This honestly feels like a KZ ear tip. That is curious. Okay. I wonder if there's any relation. And then there is the second, no, third set of tips. Um, these feel, these feel like slightly nicer silicone. Maybe not. I don't know. They're all about the same. Uh, maybe a little bit narrower bore. 
but yeah, no labeling on them to kind of like indicate what they think the difference is between these different ear tips. And it's always nice to, to see what the manufacturer, like why did they supply multiple ear tips? I mean, foam to silicone, that's kind of like a preference thing. Um, but why are there multiple different types of silicone tips? Are there, are, are there some that emphasize something else? Let's see, we got, oh, we got my, my Zen's credit card. There you go, there are your QR codes. Steal all my money. I assume that's what that does. Box that back up, and then we'll take a look at what's inside this little carry case, which is pretty handsome. Let's give it a smell test. Hmm. I don't know, it smells pretty nice, but I don't think that's leather. Oh uh, yeah, pretty nice looking case here. Got some nice weight to it. And unsurprisingly, here's where we've got the Mangard TINs. Take a look at that little carry case before I throw that thing to the side. And well, Mangard, appreciate you already connecting this thing to the cable for me. Less work for me. Oh, Hefe saying you love the messages on the IM packages. Yeah, they're, they're, I like it when they get creative, you know, when they, when they, especially when they, when they create memes like, uh, Oppity. Alice is saying, uh, yeah, I've been waiting to see you do this one. I think referring to the Mangard T, you're probably one of the people who asked me about this one, but you didn't end up buying the Blessing Dusk because there are more reviews and videos on that one. So, I mean, I can just say I haven't heard this thing yet, but you didn't make a mistake with the dusk. The dusk is just really good. Now, maybe the Mangard T, I like it even better, but you should be perfectly happy with the dusk. Let's see, I assume, oh, this is a two pin. That is one of the stiffest two pin connectors I have ever experienced in my life. Holy, I'm not even gonna try and take that thing off anymore. Uh, but let's punch in on the Mangard T. Um, actually, let me go ahead and unwind this cable just to see what we're working with in terms of kinks and stuff like that. Yeah, this is actually a pretty nice little cable. I don't know, probably equivalent to uh, your average Yinyu cable, which is to say generally better than most cables, but um, yeah, there you go. Let's see. Zoom in on that. We've got a nice little simple Y split with a bead chin cinch, which is, you can see it's not moving itself. So that's actually gonna be functional. Much appreciated. Uh, let's wind it up real quick. Uh, and we do have down here, oh, interesting. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That is a 2.5 millimeter connector. So wait, is this a 2. That's a 3.5 millimeter to 6.3 millimeter adapter this is a 2.5, this doesn't work. And I, maybe I'm missing something in the box. I'll double check, but I don't see any way to actually use this with that, which is curious. Um, fortunately, I do have plenty of adapters on hand, so I will pull one out. Um, but interesting choice, Mangard. So put the T up like that, and I'm gonna grab these tips. We'll start with these ones. They're maybe a little bit on the shorter side and throw them on so we can see the final package. Um, the nozzles are a little bit on the long side. You can see here sticking out. Um, but that's what your nozzle looks like. Throw these tips on it. And the... Um, the manger does appear to be made out of a translucent, kind of a dark, smoky plastic. Oh, I feel really self-conscious every time I'm putting these tips on and struggling with it. Like, like, I feel like I should be an expert at putting on ear tips, but sometimes, sometimes there are unexpected challenges and, and it's okay. Just as a message out, to, to all you out there, it's okay to struggle every once in a while. Everyone does. Um, but yeah. All right. These tips are, I think, man, this is kind of an odd nozzle. But there we go. All right. We've got the tips on there. 
That is what the Manger T looks like. Let's zoom in on this so you can see it up close as best as possible. That's actually a pretty handsome looking little IEM. Um, it's got an interesting pattern in here. It almost kind of looks like, let's see if I can get that on camera to light up right. It kind of looks like there's like copper flake in there um, and then almost like streaks of charcoal or something. That's actually a really cool look. Um, that's handsome. And then the, the, the plastic I did mention is translucent, although it's pretty dark. So you can see inside and it appears to be a hollow shell. It's not like a, a filled resin, like a, like a Moondrop um, blessing or anything like that. Um, just kind of a different, a different way to build them. But yeah, let me, let me go ahead and throw these things in my ear. I'm a little bit, frankly, I'm a little bit intimidated by that nozzle length, but we'll see how it fits. And first impression is actually not bad. Yeah, the nozzle, I mean, the nozzle length, I can feel it is a little bit on the long side, kind of reminds me of uh, the C Audio Yume in terms of how it fits in my, inside my ear. This is maybe a little bit larger, um, but I would say moderately sized. The Yume, I would say, was a little bit small in terms of how much room it fit, filled my ear. This fills my ear pretty well. Isolation is a little bit above average, I would say. Generally, nothing to fear. Uh, what I was afraid of in terms of the fit, not afraid of anymore. That's pretty comfortable. All right, so let's go back down here and we will try to produce a frequency response of the Manger T. Again, I'll kind of insert it like that. And hopefully that's about the right spot. Let me, um, while I switch over here and see what's going on in the live chat. Da, da, da. Actually, let me, let me pop into frame so it's not you're not just looking at a blank table while I look at the live chat. But yeah, let me see what's going on. Some chat about the the Mangard. Um, my life saying you almost bought one, but you chose the Thea Audio Legacy Five to save fifty bucks instead. Yeah, that's uh, the Legacy Five. We're gonna we're gonna check unbox that one and graph it as well. But yeah, it is about fifty bucks cheaper than the Mangard. Alice, as you're saying, so you were talking, you were the one that was talking about looking at considering it, but you ended up going with the, uh, you ended up going with the dusk because there weren't enough reviews. And you're saying here, you have a feeling that more people would buy this IM if it had more reviews. So we'll see. This is going to be one I will be doing a review for the Mangard T. Balanced all the way. I don't know about that. I, I just I don't I don't I don't do the balance thing I, I I had nothing against the balance thing, but man I just I like being able to easily Move a headphone from one device to the other. I'm always like trying out new daps moving from my desktop to my laptop and Having to deal with adapters and stuff like that. I just I don't think that's worth it my opinion I, I think balance cables are more placebo than high-res audio but not more placebo than MQA. Did you guys, did you all see that MQA video, by the way, by um, Golden Sound, I think it is? Uh, let me grab a link to that and paste a link in chat. Not that I'm trying to get you to stop watching my live stream, but man, this video's just outstanding work. Um, let me grab a link to it. MQA, Golden Sound. So, what Golden Sound did was actually, I'll paste a link here. Um, what Golden Sound did, um, basically just MQA audio is kind of, a, kind of a, a bit of an enigma and a bit of a mystery. And like they kind of make claims about it being better than normal digital audio that you would get over the internet. Um, but they don't tell you much about it. I guess it's it's, it's a bit of a, they, they intentionally keep it secretive about what they are doing with the sound. So what Golden, Golden Sound did was actually published their own music through Tidal um, to basically have it go through the MQA encoding process and then compared files made before publishing through Tidal and then after publishing through Tidal uh, and really just like kind of kind of took them to task. So rip MQA. 
but really, uh, really great work from Golden Sound on that one. Let me double check this box and make sure I'm not missing anything, but I'm pretty confident. Yep, there is no 2.5 millimeter adapter. That was an interesting choice by Mangard. Uh, Chen Quan Jin, I see you're saying Mangard T doesn't fit quite comfortable. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely on the larger, or sort of the longer, um, longer nozzle length. Uh, but it seemed on initial impression, it actually fit me pretty well. Metal 571, welcome. Just chilling, hanging out, doing something a little different today, a little more casual. And El Jefe, that's right, indeed. Just hanging out with some more audio geeks. I'm glad you also have a you were able to catch the video. Um, Golden Sound published it just a few days ago, honestly. It wasn't that long ago, uh, maybe over the weekend. All right, so let me go grab an adapter so I can actually measure uh, this thing. And I hope I've got, I said I had an adapter, make sure I've actually got one here on hand. I have got do new adapters, which are not gonna help me right now. I've got 2.5 millimeter to 4.4 millimeter, also not gonna help me out right now. Another 2.5 to 4.4. Um, all right. Second attempt. Go back here. And I think I've actually got, there we go. I've got a 2.5 to 3.5 adapter on this cable. This is the cable that I, I had bought this cable on AliExpress for using on my Sennheiser HD 600s. And you can see that is HD 600 cable connector uh, and it's got a balanced 2.5 millimeter termination because that was actually the first time I played around with balanced cables at all like I, I think I was reviewing the Cowon Planu D2 DAP that had a 2.5 millimeter connection on it and uh, I just wanted to see what balance was all about so I got this cable for it and then I ended up liking this cable but I don't really care about balance so I just leave this Fio adapter on it at all times. Um, yeah, let's throw that aside, throw this adapter onto the mangard, plug this into my computer. We've got this thing hooked up. All right, I think we are now officially ready to measure the mangard T. All right, let's, uh, let's hide this thing because we don't need to look at that for now. Set our volume to three, we'll see, we'll, we'll see how that does. So it's interesting that the T almost clipped there. You saw that my headroom was like 3.5 decibels. That means that it, it almost clipped. Um, and that was at a volume setting of three on my Mac, um, which probably doesn't mean a lot to most people, but I can just tell you from experience that most of my earphones I measure at like a volume level of four or five. So the fact that it almost clipped at three is, gonna, is suggesting to me that it's a pretty sensitive I am. Uh, but yeah, there's our frequency response. Let's check. It looks like we got our peak almost exactly at eight. 8,000 Hertz. So that's exactly where I want it. I'm happy that was an easy one, right? Sometimes they're not that easy. So that, that one, the Manger T, that was pretty easy. But yeah, you can see what we've got here is actually, honestly, that's a pretty clean looking mid range. It's, it's going to be bassy a little bit on the warm side uh, because this bass does come up to, yeah, about equal to the ear gain here. Uh, but yeah, that's actually pretty pretty decent looking frequency response graph. And if I go back to the NS9, um, try to ignore for a second that this one is so much lower than this one. That's just different volume levels. Uh, once I throw it into SquigLink, which is this tool over here, um, you'll be able to, to, it'll normalize it to the same audio level. Um, but yeah, uh, basically let's, let's see, let me, 
let me take measurement actions. Let's go to, uh, let's just do it with the, the mangard since that one we did. And I'll move that one down. I try to normalize them typically at around 500 hertz. So basically here at around 500 hertz, make them so that they cross over. It's my rough strategy. And then that tends to make them a little bit more comparable, but there's also honestly just different places to align them. But based on this alignment, all right, we've got the Mangard T in purple and the NS9 in this teal color. You can see the NS9 is gonna be a lot basier um, than the Mangard T. Not that the Mangard T looks like it's a base light earphone, uh, but that is, that is that is definitely a big difference in terms of bass. Um, upper mid range here seems to be about in line, but like the fact that the bass is so high here on the NS9 is going to mean that the vocal range, I have a feeling, is going to feel a little bit kind of pushed back. Although with that vocal tip bringing up that presence here and sort of that 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 four to six K region, um, it might it might give vocals enough of an edge to kind of break through. Um, but yeah, let me pull that back out. And that is the Manger T. That's actually a pretty good looking frequency response graph, honestly, or frequency. Yeah, I, uh, I'm more interested in hearing that now, now that I've seen that. Very cool. Any thoughts on that from the live, ch the, the live chat? Let me see what's going on right now. Uh, some chat about Golden Ears video. Yeah, just an outstanding video. Highly recommend it. Uh, Adam Mobius is asking, can I easily tell the difference between FLAC files and 320 KBP? For me, no, I can't. Um, there is an interesting test online. It's it's a little bit limited because I'm not a big fan of like the music selection choices that they had. Um, but there's an interesting test. I think it's like, I, I always forget if it's PBS or NPR, um, but basically like just Google search NPR or PBS um, MP3 versus uh, wave or something like that, where they basically have this webpage and they've got a number of different songs and little short clips broken out from each song. And they have it available in MP3 at I think 320, uh, MP3 at 128 kbps, and then as well an uncompressed wave file. And um, it's, a, it's blind, like you can't tell which file is which, and you can listen to them all and, and try and pick out which one you think sounds the best. Um, it's an interesting test. Again, I'm not a big fan of the music that they chose there because I don't know that it's necessarily the, the best choices for illustrating the differences, but I can say uh, I had a really hard time with that test. Usually the 128 kbps mp3 was fairly obvious, you could tell that one, but between mp3, like a high bitrate mp3 and a wave file, there's not a lot, there's not a lot there. Now, I still choose to store a library of FLAC files because the size difference is not really that major. From MP, from like a high bitrate mp3 to a FLAC file, I'm, I'm happy with that size difference. Uh, and just knowing that I'm not losing any audio or any 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 audio information uh, is enough for me to just prefer FLAC. So I do prefer it still. Hot Jeremy. You're saying Golden Sounds video is already added to MK, MQA's Wikipedia article. <sighs> that, that'll be an interesting Wikipedia battle. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe MQA won't won't bother trying to contest that, but but that's that's cool. What if I mean, what if that video is the end of MQA, like the beginning of the end of MQA? What does that mean for title? What does that mean for Twitter or I guess Square, which just recently bought Tidal? Um, it's interesting. Uh, Hiran, you're saying the T is amazing for hard rock. Interesting. I'll have to try that out. Uh, I don't know if I listened. To, uh, does Smashing Pumpkins count as hard rock? That's probably like the closest thing I listen to. Uh, and then my life matter, you're saying other than the 5k dip, it does look like the Thea Audio Legacy 5, which I guess we'll find out in a bit because we're going to unbox that one in a bit. Um, 
Should I do the Legacy 5 next just to check out? Uh, and I see someone clarifying that it does seem that the accessories for the, the there are different variants of the T. Um, the accessories are the same, and I just got the 2.5 millimeter version. There's also a 3.5 millimeter and a 4.4. So you can get the version you want. It's just weird that the 3.5 millimeter version even comes with the uh, these adapters that only work with a 3.5 millimeter um, termination. No. All right, let me put this stuff away real quick as best as I can. And then we will move over to, I guess we'll do the Legacy 5 and then I think I'll, I'll do Legacy 5, Moondrop Sparks, and then Legacy 4. Uh, I'm bringing up the Legacy 5 be just because My Life Matter mentioned that the frequency response looked similar to the Manger T and I'm actually kind of interested to check that out. Boxing this stuff up, put it aside, unplug the mangard down here on the table. Oh, my stream deck is frozen. Let's go, Elgato, you can do it. Maybe you can't, maybe I gotta unplug it and replug it back in. The old IT, the oldest IT trick in the book which tends to surprisingly work. All right, let me go over here. Where is my... Hmm. Is this it? That is it. Cool. Plug, unplugged it. Plugged it back in. We're back in business. Um, let's see. Okay, let's grab the box for the Thea Audio Legacy 5, which I believe is this unfortunately battered one something up off the ground that I dropped. I dropped my Manger T credit card, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, here we've got the Thea Audio Legacy 4, and let me go back to my cheat sheet, um, just so I can give you a little bit of information about this thing, or Legacy 5, a little bit of information before I unbox it. Again, shout out to Linsol Audio for sending this in for review. Um, the Legacy 5 is $250 IEM, and it is a hybrid, like, I think, wait, yeah, I think everything here, maybe not the sparks, but everything else here is a hybrid IM. Um, this is a single dynamic driver with four balanced armatures. And then the Legacy 4 that we're gonna unbox later, I think I'm gonna leave that one last again. Um, that one is three balanced armatures. So basically uh, you're paying, what, an extra $55 for an extra balanced armature, but I mean, it's not really that simple. Um, I would not consider the count of drivers as being that important. Metal 571 is saying, yeah, did you try turning it on and off again? That's that's it's, that's the IT, that's the that's the solve. It works for a surprising number of things. Like cars are getting complicated these days. And like sometimes you got a problem with a car and then just turn it off, turn it back on again. And maybe, maybe the computer, something in the computer tripped up or, um, yeah. Uh, Jeremy, yeah, you're saying there's a lot of money in MQA, so they're not going to take that video lying down for sure. It's going to be a battle. Um, it's just do. It's going to be because that video is out there now, it's going to be really easy for um, anyone that is a detractor of MQA to point to this one video that's really well done. And you know, it's, it's, it's a longish video, but it's still pretty concise for the amount of information that it's packing in there. Um, and, 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 and it seems like there's not much to contest there. Like, I don't know. If you have stonks in MQA, I would sell them now, but I'm not a financial guy. So don't, don't ask me. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the table and go ahead and crack open this unfortunate box, but oh, look at that. A nice little sliding mechanism. That's cute. I like that. You know, I was talking about, I like my magnets, but the, the sliding mechanism, this little drawer, I think that's pretty cute too. Uh, we got some parchment paper if I need to do any baking later. Let's see if we can line that up. Oh yeah, look at that. That was oddly satisfying, right? A little animation right there. The A audio. 
All right, so here we've got the Legacy. Put that aside. We've got the Legacy 5 in its box. And I do believe that these things come in different colors um, that Linsole, they make available on the website. Throw that aside. We've got this little carry case, which I did a review of the Thea Audio Monarch. And um, I had it on loan from headphones.com. And I didn't have it with the original packaging, but it was handed to me in a case just like this one. And I actually, um, I really like this case. Like, I don't usually use IEM cases that, that the cases that come with an IEM, but this one, there's just something about this one. It's got like the right, the right maybe thinness to it that it feels really handleable. It's got a magnet on it, like just effortless. I like this case, but let's see what we got inside this case. Put it aside. Hey, what's up, Z-Pult? New camera. Yeah, I've actually, I've had this camera for a while, but I don't usually use it for my videos because I use my Micro Four Thirds stuff up there. This is my Canon Z6 for all the camera nerds out there. Uh, and on it, I have an Olympus 28 millimeter F2 lens from the 80s or the 90s. Like it's an old lens. Uh, but yeah, let's see what we get inside this box. We got, of course, our set of tips. This looks like a spin fit tip, which is interesting, but it's just one spin fit tip. Is that right? Did I miss something inside this box? No, nope, that's everything. Did I accidentally throw everything aside? I don't think I did. That is a curious setup. So um, we get a handful of different foam tips, um, which is usually when you get foam tips, you get one set and one set only. Here we get, it looks like three different sizes of foam tips. Uh, these are some girthy boys here. And then these medium ones seem about typical width. And then you get some small ones, which if I do ever use uh, foam tips, usually the small ones are the ones that work for me. And then you also get a set of silicone tips. And this looks like a spin fit. Let's go ahead and pull it out of the package and punch in on it and, and confirm. But it's curious that there's only one size. Uh, pull this thing aside and it does appear to be a spin fit, which um, if, for those who haven't used spin fit tips before, um, let's see if I can demonstrate this on basically what they do um, is they just, they've got a, they've got this weird, um, this weird neck, which is why I pulled it up here where the, the, the umbrella part of the tip connects to the stem. Um, that allows the stem to kind of move independently of the, the umbrella part. And so because of that, let's see, usually I would like hold on to the nozzle, but like it basically will kind of rotate around and ostensibly that fits some people's ears better than, than normal tips. But yeah, it's interesting that they came with spin fits, which is I think generally a more expensive tip. And maybe that's why they only included one of them, but uh, you gotta hope that you are a medium because that is uh, that is a medium size spin fit tip. Uh, and then the cable that we've got here is a pretty nice looking cable. It does look like we got a 3.5 millimeter connector. I'm thankful for that personally. Um, but yeah, two pin, I'm sure 0.78 millimeter, like typical. Let's uh, let's wind it up, and then we'll pull out the ear pieces and throw them on the cable. Uh, and for those who missed my how to wind an IAM cable video, the technique I'm using there might appear to be a little bit atypical, but I promise you that is that is the best way to wrap up your IAM cables, at least the best way I've found. But yeah, let's go ahead and pull these things out here. Um, and no pre-installed tips. So yeah, indeed, we do just have the one set of spin fits, which is interesting. Put that aside uh, and zoom in here on the Thea Audio. Legacy five. That is, that's a pretty handsome look. Honestly, that is okay. That's handsome. So you can see that the pattern in them looks, I think is going to come across in the camera. Yeah. You can kind of see that it's got like, it's got some depth and dimension to it. It almost looks a bit like a, like hollow nail polish for all my, um, simply nail logical fans out there. I know you're out there. Uh, but yeah, it kind of looks like a, like a hollow nail polish, but it's kind of behind, a pretty deep gloss look. So it's got, it's got this like nice sense of depth to it. But let me go ahead and throw tips onto it. I'll take a look at that nozzle first. Um, 
doesn't appear to be a lip on there, so hopefully it holds the tips on okay. Uh, but I have actually, you know, honestly, I have listened to the Thea Audio Legacy 5 in the past. I didn't spend a ton of time with it because I wasn't doing a review. Um, but I did spend a little bit of time with it. And from what I remember, I did actually like the way it sounded. Um, and I do also recall that the fit was pretty good. Uh, you may recall from my review of the Monarch, that one was a little bit too large for me, but the Legacy 5 was actually a pretty good size. So let's throw this thing onto the cable. Also a pretty stiff two-point pin connection. Be careful with your two pins. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Any comments I should be responding to? Man, it's really hard to do two things at once, right? Anyone ever tried doing two things at once? Uh, cost I think, see you saying, uh, you also can't hear a difference between uh, an MP3 above 125 KB. I bet you could hear the difference between a, a, one, a 128 KBPS MP3 and a FLAC file. With the wrong, the right music, I'm pretty sure you would be able to hear that difference. Uh, maybe I should set up something that'll let people test that with music that I think demonstrates that sound difference better. Zombie Snail, it sounds like you did the test. You said you spent a good hour on those songs to tell the difference and you got 80%. On some songs it's easy to tell and some others it's almost impossible, yeah. And that's where it really comes down to. Uh, it really comes down to the mastering, right? If the original recording of the song, whether it's because they didn't do a great job in the recording or the mastering, or maybe it's just the music itself doesn't lend itself to that sort of micro detail and like sharp transient perception, um, having a higher resolution file is not going to make it sound any better. Uh, My Life Matter, you said you also got the purple and black Legacy 5. Yeah, this is a handsome look. I forget the color of the one that I, um, I had on loan for a little bit uh, and listened to, but this one I think is... That's pretty handsome. Uh, Joe S, you're saying, I, I don't know what it is, but if silicone tip is too soft, my ear hairs defeat the seal. Um, you like Zelastex, but they don't come out easily when someone wants to talk to you. Yeah, so that was definitely the case with um, the, the ear tips that came with the Sennheiser IE300. Um, I just, I could not get a, like, the, the, the walls of the ear tip were so thin that it would just kind of collapse when I put it in my ear and I wouldn't get a seal, which, which is really weird. I don't think I've ever actually experienced that before. Um, but actually here, well, I guess we're on camera. Might as well throw these things in my ears and see how the Legacy 5 fits. And yeah, like I remember, this is, this is a pretty comfortable fitting I am. Uh, we've got those spin fit medium tips, which I think are gonna work out well for me. Fortunately, there it is. Legacy 5 in my ear. Kind of looks just black here on camera. Um, but yeah, I promise. I guess you saw it up close. Uh, it does actually have a little bit more color and depth to it. Am I in focus? I feel like I'm not in focus. Maybe I'm better here. Uh, but yeah, isolation actually seems pretty pretty strong. So that's a good fitting I am. I'm actually pretty excited about reviewing this one. Um, I guess while we're here, let's go ahead and slide in the microphone and measure it. Got a 3.5 millimeter connector already on it, so that should be pretty easy. Slide this thing in. I'm gonna estimate, guesstimate on my depth for my correct pin again, and then we'll jump over here to Rue. Disable the Manger T graph for now. I'm gonna measure it at volume level of three. All right, so there is a graph. Let's see, where do we get our, our peak? Uh, it looks like it could do to be a little bit deeper. So maybe I'll try that. And you can also see down here, you see this little notch in the base uh, or kind of like where the base turns into the mid-range. This could be one of a couple things. I don't usually see this kind of notch in other measurements. So I think 
Um, it could be a thing with my coupler, um, sometimes just refitting, unfitting and refitting the IM in the coupler, like we're gonna do real quick here. Um, we'll solve that. But I also kind of suspect that that notch might be um, an indicator of where the transition between the balance, the dynamic driver to the balanced armature is. I, I again, I, I don't, I don't make IM, so I, I can't confirm that. But I'd be pretty interested to hear from someone uh, that that maybe knows better. Is this this notch that I see in the frequency response? Is that the transition between the dynamic driver to the balanced armatures? All right, so that is measurement number two, and that seems to be just about the same. In fact, my base got a little bit squiggly, which again, that happens sometimes. I'm gonna just go ahead and toss that one, do it again. It's getting squiggly again. That, so this squiggly base down here, that's just suggesting to me that I didn't quite get this heel correct. Uh, but let me see if I got the, the depth on it any better. It did actually seem like I got the depth better. Um, so let me try once more. And you can see measurements. Um, not necessarily the, the, the prettiest or the most exciting work. But this is what we do to put squiggles online. Try it one more time. Jump back over here. See if we can get both the depth correct and the smoother base response. Measure excessive clipping, what did I do? Might not have set my volume correct. Let's try that again. I'm a professional. sure what's going on let's cancel that punch out here restart let's go I'm getting kind of a lot of what is it doing rue you're on drugs bro let me go ahead and save all these measurements real quick um, and then quit out of Rue and restart this thing. You know, the old light heat trick. And back over here. Um, I'm gonna open up that same measurement file so we have those things for reference again. Go over here and disable them all for now. Get rid of that one. That was our best one so far. But let's see if we can get this right. All right, it seems a little bit better, but still getting squiggly base. So. Um, I might mess around with this a little bit more later, but I think for now we're going to go ahead and stick with um, this first one that I got, where I didn't quite get this thing exactly where I want it, but that's close enough, honestly. So we'll call that one Legacy 5, and uh, the reason I was interested in measuring this one right now is because uh, My Life Matter, you mentioned that it looked a lot like the Mangard T-Graph, and here's what they look like in comparison. Interesting that they are already kind of lined up at about 500 hertz, so it looks like um, sensitivity wise, they're probably pretty similar. Uh, but yeah, it looks like the Legacy 5 is actually a little bit, um, a little bit reduced in the base versus the Manger T, but they do have a pretty similar arc, a pretty similar kind of, uh, tame upper mid range peak, fairly flat looking frequency response. Honestly, that's interesting. Okay. Any thoughts in the live chat? Legacy 5 versus Mangard T, which one, um, I guess, which one are you most interested in hearing?
Yeah, Umar saying all these unboxings got me wanting to buy a new IM. Yeah, man, that's the oh the urge, the urge to try something new. It's just endless. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and move on to you know what? We've got 95 people here. I was gonna go ahead and save the sparks for last, but let's try it now. I, I'm gonna warn you right now, the sparks might be difficult for me to measure because I'm gonna have to pair them to my my Mac, um, the Bluetooth, and we'll, I guess we'll see in real time how difficult or easy that is. But yeah, let me put away the stuff for the Legacy 5. We got that case because I actually like that case. Uh, and we'll pull in Moondrop Sparks. Let's uh, let's get out on a. Oh, that was a bad spin. Too aggressive. But there we go. There's your spin for the Moondrop Sparks. This box, this packaging kind of reminds me of like an AirPods box. So I'm actually pretty, pretty into it. Um, I guess yeah. Let's just go ahead and. I guess, uh, what do we know about this thing before I open it up? Uh, again, Critical just recently did an unboxing where he produced a frequency response, although looks like they've got their own here in the packaging. We'll talk about that later. Um, I believe this is a single dynamic driver, true wireless earphone. So unlike the other ones that I've been looking at here, there's no wire. Um, pricing, they don't have an official listing for this thing. I got this via Shenzhen Audio. I went to their website right before this video. I couldn't find the listing with the official pricing, but I think, according to Critical, it's a $90 uh, true wireless IEM. So um, it, it, there, there's a lot of true wireless IEMs out there from um, smaller companies in China. You know, uh, what is, what's one, like the Halo, the Halo series, um, you can get for like 30 bucks. But they don't have they don't have very intentional tuning. In fact, I actually have frequency responses of um, some of the halos. Maybe I'll look at that after I graph the sparks here. Um, but yeah, I think 90 bucks for a true wireless IM tuned by the folks at Untrap. They're just kind of like really good at tuning generally. You know, again, I haven't heard this thing, but I'm gonna guess that the frequency response looks like what they say it looks like, um, which means it's probably gonna probably gonna be tuned pretty well. Yeah, let's go and crack open this box. We got magnets. Apple doesn't have magnets. Got instructions, which um, appear to be in all Chinese. I don't think that's gonna help me. If anyone out there, if I'm having trouble, if there's anyone out there watching right now um, that is able to read Chinese, it will be very helpful. But hopefully I'm not gonna need instructions, we'll see. Uh, inside, I mean, I think it's going to be a pretty simple unboxing. Oof, that is a little bit tight in there, though. Hold on. We got place for two fingers. Pull out the case for the sparks. Uh, nothing else back there. Wait, we can pull that out. We can pop the pieces out. Put that aside. Pop the pieces aside. Let me see if there's anything under here. If this is just, is this paperwork? Like, what's going on under here? feels like something I, sh I am I am I am I breaking the fourth wall is that something I need is that paper like it feels like it's paper but oh man it says all right let's see I'm pulling out the knife uh, I'm not gonna cut anything open but I do need it to I think pry this out of here it does appear to be paperwork all right cool I wasn't smoking And you're also in there difficultly. And there's even more. All right, so just heads up when you are unboxing your Moondrop Spark, grab something that's you can wedge in there. All right, let's see, we've got some paperwork here. We've got some, wow, very large paperwork here. Uh, more instructions. Let's see, that's all. Yeah, there appears to be no English on here yet. I, I do know that this is, um, I, given the fact that there's no official listing for this item yet, um, I, I, I think this is a brand new product. I think it's fair to say it's a brand new product. It's not yet available in the US. 
Um, so it's possible that the unit I've got has been just packaged for, um, for local region sale. All right, man, this, okay, this is definitely a lot more complicated than I expected the Spark unboxing to be, but man, there is a bunch of paperwork. We'll put that aside. It looks like we've got a little shorty USB cable, um, which I'm curious to see. I mean, I could just look on the back of the Spark itself, but I want to, I want to see it from the cable. You tell me what kind of cable are we looking at? That is USB-C. How many years did we go through tech reviewers unboxing things and complaining about getting um, micro USB? It was at least at least three, maybe four good years of people pretending that USB-C was the standard, but manufacturers really telling us it's not the standard yet, but it does seem to be uh, that 2020 and 2021 for sure, uh, and maybe even 2020 were officially the years of USB-C. All right, so we've got a set of foam tips here and we've got three different sets of silicone tips here. That's a lot of... That's a lot of silicone tips. These ones right here appear to be pretty typical Moondrop tips. Um, it seems to be like the same kind of tip that you would see on uh, an SSR or Canos Pro or Aria, et cetera, et cetera. Throw those over here. These tips, however, I'm this one looks like it's maybe a little bit shorter. Uh, here and I see you making an interesting comment. You're saying that true wireless should have like a 50% price premium over like the same sounding quality um, non wireless. That's an interesting formula. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's an, it's an interesting thing. I was like, how, what are the prices that people expect for things to be? If you had a Bluetooth version of a Moondrop Blessing 2, would you be happy to pay $500 for that? That's what it sounds like you're saying. Yeah, you can see these tips. These seem to be more like typical true wireless tips. Um, and if you're wondering what is a true wireless tip and how is that different, it just usually means that like the um, the nozzle is like behind the umbrella. Does that does that make sense? You can see that it, whereas if I pull out one of these tips, which is more typical, you can see that the nozzle is kind of flush with the umbrella. And I think that basically just means that this is going to fit a little bit tighter onto here and it's going to make a shorter package so it will fit more comfortably into the case and i think that's why true wireless ims typically have these sh shorter tips but it's interesting that the spark appears to come with both curious uh, and then what's going on in this other package of yet another set of tips i i have no idea what to expect ladies and gentlemen Um, this is an entirely new type of tip. I haven't seen this type of tip from Moondrop before. Uh, let's zoom in on that. Look at how just like kind of like odd and like conical that is. That's interesting. Huh. I think it's a huh from me. I don't know. I don't know what to think about that tip. Um, that is pretty atypical. Pardon the, not quite a pun. Yeah, what the heck? What a weird tip. Um, I don't think that's going to be the first one I try, but I'm curious to try it. Uh, and then, well, yeah, I guess we'll just go ahead and punch in here on the meat and potatoes. And, oh, look at that. They've already just started glowing for me. So, yeah, it is a true wireless IM. Uh, the nozzles here on the Spark actually a little, look a little bit on the long side, a little bit longer than um, something like the, the Aria or the Starfield. The pieces are kind of covered in like a soft soft touch, almost rubber, which is interesting. The case is also in that. I'm trying to remember, I think the Sony XM3, the WF XM3 that comes in a case, actually kind of a lot like this, also has that same kind of rubberized coating. That's interesting. I haven't had an IEM. I don't think I've had an IEM that has that rubberized coating on it though. That's pretty cool. Uh, here you can see the little contacts these are going to be the charging contacts where this thing fits into the case. And I'm going to go ahead and start with just typical Moondrop tips. Um, 
mostly because I'm curious to see if that actually works. That's surprisingly a long stem for a true wireless IAM. Um, and I'm curious to see if that actually fits in the case. That's cute. Hmm. Uh, but then the case itself, we got a lid. I think it's magnetic, but the, uh, the hinge is actually a little bit on the stiff side, so I'm not able to have it totally snap itself shut, but there you go. Let's take this piece. Let's see, I'm gonna take a stab and drop that one there. Did that one fit? Did that fit? Did I just do that correctly or did it incorrectly? I might've done that incorrectly. What happens if I do it like this? Oh, that's definitely incorrectly. All right, we'll put it in that way. Okay, we got it in there correctly. We're good. We're gravy. Now this, now these pieces are in the case and charging. Um, blinking still over here. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, they got that interesting glow. I'm guessing that's indicating that this thing is charging the earpieces. Uh, the red lights in there also indicating that it's charging the earpieces. This is actually a very futuristic, very progressive look from Moondrop. Did not expect this, honestly. Uh, and then you've got your USB-C port down there. So hopefully these things have enough charge. I'll be able to sync them up with my computer. I think I can hear them talking to me. Hopefully this is not too difficult. Oh my gosh. I am, frankly, folks, I'm actually, I'm a little afraid. Um, software, like in, the, in, in a device like this has software built into it. Software, being good at tuning an IM and making IMs is a completely different skill and set of uh, proficiencies than writing good software. So I'm interested to see what the software design is on uh, the Sparks, but let's go ahead and throw them in my ears. We'll see how they fit. Again, this is with the stock Moondrop tips. You can hear it. All right, they're gonna be beeping in my ears while I'm doing this. Sounds kind of like a car door is open. There you go, there's the fit inside my ear. Go over here so I can actually, let's see, where am I in focus? There we go. This thing's beeping at me constantly right now. because It's trying to pair. And it's just the left piece that's beeping. Um, but fit seems pretty good actually, you know? Most of the, um, most of the purchase that this thing's going to get on my on my ear and probably your ear is going to be with the ear tip itself. So maybe that's why they included so many different tips to make sure that you're going to be able to get a good grip on it. The ear pieces themselves have a nice shape for a pretty typical I am. Um, you can't see there. But they have a pretty nice shape, right? It's like kind of like, you know, it's not too unlike the shape of something like the Thea Audios that I just unboxed. But uh, it doesn't like doesn't like lock into my ear because of the shape. Like it just, it fits into my ear because of the shape, but the locking mechanism, sort of like what's gonna hold it there is just gonna be the friction of this thing, of the ear tip inside my ear canal. Okay, okay. That thing is constantly beeping at me. Let me throw this back into the case. And actually this is gonna be an important test. I, did, I wasn't paying attention when I, when I put these things into or when I took these things out of the case and when I put them in. But so I just took these out of my ears in this, this orientation. This is the right ear piece. This is the left ear piece. Is that how they fit into the case? That is. Okay, thank you. There's some true wireless earphones out there where uh, the left piece actually goes on the right side and the right ear piece goes on the left side. And I hate that. It's just like, I don't know, maybe it's a particular thing to me, but it, 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 seems, it seems like a mess up. Um, and it's, it's good that Moondrop didn't seem to have done that. Um, yeah, so we got them in the case. Let me, let me try and pair these things. Uh, actually, let me catch up with the chat real quick and see if there's any, any interesting commentary. Uh, Alex Hong, you're saying you, for you, you're actually less willing, you're, you're willing to pay less, wait, no, sorry. You're less willing to pay more for a true wireless because batteries do degrade and will become unused. That's a very good point. You know, if this was, let's say a Moondrop Blessing 2 quality IEM, and let's say it even cost exactly the same, you know, the, the wireless was free. There is sort of like a, a lifespan on this thing or any other true wireless IEM because there's a battery built inside of it. And maybe after two or three years of using it daily, 
the battery won't hold a charge and it's not really easy to replace the batteries. So probably just gonna have to get rid of it. Whereas a $300 blessing on a wire, it's gonna last you a lifetime ostensibly. So I get that, I get what you're saying. Uh, Michael Copper, I see you're asking about the FIO UTSW3 or UTW. I forget exactly which combination of letters and numbers that is. Um, I actually have the UT, SW, UT, UT, UTW S3. Um, I've been trying to evaluate them, but I, I just, I have had a hard time spending too much time with them. They, they, they're okay. That's my, that's kind of my short version. They're okay. They work. Um, I can tell it's Bluetooth. They don't have, they don't support LDAC. Uh, they do support, I believe, Aptex. Um, but yeah. I see some commentary on the blinking lights on the, the sparks. I'm curious to see what the light situation is gonna be like once these things are paired up and like in my ears and listening. Cause that's another thing we talked about, or I mentioned that software um, is a thing that's easy to get wrong and when the lights are turned on, when they're blinking and stuff like that, that's that's kind of like a part of software. And again, I'm, I'm curious to see how Moondrop is done with that. Blue collar. Wow, we get to see the rest of the lab. I like this look. Yeah, this is this is my environment. This is where I work. Um, maybe one day I'll unblur the background and walk around it, but. Uh, over here, this is where I'm usually facing when I'm talking to you guys, but today I'm, I'm facing this way. Mm, here and I see you're asking a very important question is how do these things fit with the, the, the head shake test? So let's go ahead and throw it in my ear. And I'm going to warn you, I got a lot of hair right now. So this might, this might get, this might get nutty, but yeah. Got them in my ears. Fit seems pretty secure. Honestly, that's actually pretty good. They did not seem to come loose at all. Um, for all you people that do that when you wear true wireless IMs. Zaya, you want me to smell it? it smells kind of like a shoe, like a, a new shoe. Oh, Hefe wears white shoes, yeah. Joe S, you spy an Ikea lamp. Yeah, down here, Ikea lamp. Actually, above my um, my setup here, Ikea lamp. The shelving all back here, Ikea. All right, enough delaying. Let's go ahead and try and let me... S I'm gonna try and pair these things. Hopefully this thing works out pretty well. Um, I guess we can try and show it over here and see if this works out. Since I do have this set up. Go into Bluetooth. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the case. I don't think anything's gonna change based on that, but we'll watch. Nope, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull them out of the case. This is the point at which I expect them to start trying to pair. And indeed, I see the light blinking on the right earpiece. And we've got one drop sparks. Hit that connect button. Maybe I should throw these things into my ears. Did I hit the connect button? I did hit the connect button. Awkward, awkward silence. Ikea review when? Um, oh, I've actually done, I've done a review of Ikea. Uh, I like their products, but man, their, their store is no bueno. I don't know what's going on. This thing doesn't want to connect. Let me go and throw them back in the case, pull them back out of the case and we'll try, try this again. Starting from the top. I'm telling y'all, software is not easy. Go back out here, go back in, 
pull these things out. All right, they're out of the case in my ears. They tell me they're pairing. I heard a boom, boom. Hit the connect button. They're not connecting. So I think unfortunately for now, I'm probably gonna have to try that again on my MacBook. Um, this is on my desktop, which has got, uh, maybe we could blame it on an older version of Mac OS. It's on Catalina. Um, but I will try these on my MacBook later and hopefully then I'll be able to get a frequency response. That's actually a little bit of a disappointment, but um, I'm sure I'll figure that out at some point. Um, I did also wanna show this, Moondrop sent me this or sorry, Shenzhen sent me this thing from Moondrop. It appears to be an aftermarket or sort of a, an additional little carry case that the Spark can come with. Or I, I'm, I'm guessing because it was boxed separately that, I'm doing a bad job of unboxing this. Um, I'm guessing because it was boxed separately that this is a secondary purchase. Um, all right, we got that out. But a little, a, little, a little carry case for your sparks. It's got like a magnetic lid, um, a pretty loose, kind of like a, well, it's like a stretchy top. Interesting. And then you got a port down here for your USB cable. So you could, uh, if you wanted to take care of your sparks, maybe you don't want those blinking lights to show. You can buy this case, throw it in there, and then you don't, you don't gotta look at them. Uh, I gotta be honest, this is not something I would personally use. I'm probably not gonna leave the sparks in this case, but um, no, that's pretty handsome. Kind of reminds me, this actually reminds me, of, oh, interesting. Look at that, when you pull the, back, the top back now. Okay, maybe I would use it because that's actually pretty cool. And that's just like a classier look for the sparks. Okay, now I'm into it. I assumed I was gonna have to remove the top and then pop the lid open, uh, but the fact that it kind of holds onto it and moves back all as one piece. That's pretty slick actually. And that's actually a nice look. So this case looks a lot like the, um, the larger case that comes with uh, something like the Moondrop Blessing 2. Um, yeah, let me see in live chat if anyone, if there are any uh, IT folks out there that wanna help me with my Bluetooth situation. My Life Matters saying, wow, those bone conduction Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth headphone on the list, you just ordered one, yeah, look it. I am a bone phone guy. I love these things. If you aren't familiar with the Aftershocks, these are the Aeropex, I've also got the Aftershocks, Trex Air. Um, these things are freaking phenomenal. They sound terrible, but they're still phenomenal. El Jefe saying uh, Bluetooth on laptops and PCs always gives me trouble. Yeah, it's always, yeah. Bluetooth in general, like on iPhone and Android is generally pretty good. I don't really have many issues with it. And I have a feeling if I try to connect these things to my Android device, it'll be pretty straightforward, but uh, definitely was not getting along with the, the Mac, the iMac. <clears throat> Galib, I see you saying uh, you're suggesting going into sound and checking which is taking priority. So um, basically up here in Mac OS, um, where I pulled down that, this thing right here, this is where I would set where the output is going to. Currently I have it going to the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack adapter, which is for measurements. Um, but that I don't think is the issue right now because it just wasn't even like leaving the available Bluetooth, basically the Bluetooth connection wasn't being made. Um, so I will have to debug that offline. And for those of you that are interested in checking out the frequency response of the Sparks once it's available, punch back over here. Um, I've got up squig.link. So this is the URL, squig.link. Uh, these are all the frequency responses of the IEMs that I have or have tested recently. Yeah, they're all here. So if you want to compare it to, let's say the Moondrop Aria, 
And I've got the Moondrop Aria. That's what the frequency response of that ion looks like. If you wanted to compare it to the Moondrop Crescent, remember that one? There is the frequency response of the Moondrop Crescent. And later today, I will definitely add the Moondrop Sparks to here. Oh, and there's your Moondrop S8, which is just a bay. Yep, there is a case for the case. Uh, thank you, Zaid, for the Yo Dog. We heard you like a case, so we made a case to put your case in. That is a good classic internet reference. All right. Um. I think that's about as far as we're going to get with the Moondrop Sparks today. So let me go ahead and throw everything back in the box and then we will finally move on to the last IM of the day, which will be the CA Audio Legacy Ford. Did my Echo just try to try to talk to me? Echo is so derp, but still useful. side and throw this over here and finally move on to the CA Audio Legacy Quattro. And do, do, do I have everything in order? I think I do. Um, yeah, all right. CA Audio Legacy 4. Kind of looks like a Uncharted logo or something like that? Is that is that weird? I don't know why that's giving me Uncharted vibes. Oh man, there's a frequency response graph. Don't look at that. That's a spoiler. Um, but yeah, let me pull up my notes on this one just to give you a little bit of information. Again, shout out to Linsoul Audio for sending this one in for review. Um, the the Legacy Four is so I, I earlier unboxed the Legacy Five, which was the two hundred and fifty dollar IM. This one is a little bit cheaper at one hundred and ninety five dollars. Um, like the Legacy 5, this is a, a hybrid IM. It's got a single dynamic driver. Uh, but here we've got three balanced armatures rather than the four balanced armatures in the Legacy 5. Again, like I don't, I wouldn't make my purchase decisions or pricing decisions based on uh, the count of drivers that you get for your money, but uh, it can be indicative of you know, how, how much control the, uh, the, the, the IEM tuners and designers had over the frequency response, which we will see in a little bit. Joe S, you're saying you thought the L4 looked less pretty in real life. We'll see. We'll see in camera, bro. All right, let's shake this thing out of the box. I think that's going to work. All right, yeah, it's coming. It's oh my gosh, this is this is tough. I don't want to shake it too hard. We had we had a we had a shaking problem last time. My life matter awesome two hours. Are we really at two hours now? We're at an hour and forty minutes. Yeah, this is definitely the long casual stream I was expecting it to be. Oh get out of this box. Alright, there we go. We did it. Oh wow, look at that. Interesting. That is unexpected kind of like a nice hard carry case the fabric cover on it and the audio logo interesting okay i did not expect that especially not in your your cheaper i am i mean 195 dollars not exactly cheap but um that is a nicer inclusion than what we got with the legacy five and here's what we get inside we got a smaller case um i do like this case here on the legacy five a little bit better than this one. So I guess there are some trade-offs, but that is not too shabby at all. Still another hard case, fabric covered. Uh, we'll unzip this and see what's inside. Oh, we've got the cable, unsurprising. Throw that aside over here. Uh, it's actually got some interesting padding here. Huh, that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, we've got some instructions, some paperwork. There's your guarantee, any QR codes. I don't see any QR codes. Man, that is disappointing. Uh, but there is instructions on how to use an IEM. 
in case you're ever curious. That is all you need to know. I'm just, there was actual text in there. I just intentionally went to the blank page. All right, let's see. Um, pull out these tips. How do we do this? I appear to be on like a metal card of some sort. That's interesting. Does this come out? Oh, oh, inch. Okay. Huh. All right, let's um, let's zoom in on this. This is like a an aluminum block plate. What the heck? CA audio. That's a little little out of control, but it's kind of nice. Um, not sure why it's wrapped in this thing. This is I think maybe that was just holding it in place because it's a little bit velcro-y. Uh, but yeah, there are your sets of tips. Um, no spin fits here, but you do get a, obviously a, a, a pretty extensive set of different sizes. Let's see if we can even figure out. Maybe it's just three different sizes uh, and then two different sets of those three sizes. That's what it appears to be. That is, okay. Someone's trying to be impressive. All right, let's go ahead and pull out the IMs themselves. I, do I need to pull this thing out or I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull them out. They're in like this neoprene thing. I don't think I need to remove that, but I just did anyway. All right, I'll put you back in there. Put you back, put you aside. Take a look at these earpieces. So there are your Legacy 4 earpieces. These are also, I think, very, very handsome. Um, I had a lot of good things to say about the Legacy 5 earpiece design. I think these look honestly just about as handsome. I think the design here comes through a little bit more clearly. Um, it does have like kind of a similar swirl paint effect, less of a hollow, uh, simply nail logical look. But um, I like this actually quite a bit. That's a pretty handsome looking I am. Uh, and then the nozzles are exposed. Let's zoom back in and see if we can see that in the camera. Uh, there's no sort of mesh or screen or anything on there. Um, they are exposed and generally in good shape. So this is another IEM that I have in the past heard. Um, again, I didn't spend a ton of time listening to it, so I don't, uh, I don't, I, I, I can't, I didn't spend enough time with it to review it, but I did spend enough time with it to know that it sounds pretty good. Uh, and I believe it also fit me really well, which we will, Double check here in a second. Let me throw on these tips. You can see that was a much easier ear tip fit than some others. And I'll throw it on this cable, which is, honestly, that's a pretty nice looking cable. It's a little bit on the, the soft side. So again, this is kind of similar to something you, like you might get from Yin Yu, um, like a $30 aftermarket cable, which is pretty good. 3.5 millimeter termination. That's what I want to see. You have a pretty small Y split here and not very attractive, but it is, it does seem to be a very functional chin cinch. See, it's not moving out of place. So it will stay in place if you need your chin cinches. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and throw it onto here. So that is the right piece. Red equals right. I don't know how people who don't think in English do that. Red equals right, R right. Like that makes sense in English. Um, I'm kind of curious if there are any other like similar tools that people use in different languages to separate the, the left and right indicators. Um, but there is your TA Audio Legacy 4. Wrap this thing up, see how it packs up, which yeah, this is, this is a nice little cable and a nice little package. I think that is a pretty handsome IEM in general. And we will throw it in the ears here in a second to see how it fits. But look at that. There we go. Any commentary? Let's see what's going on in the live chat. And guys, really appreciate y'all hanging out with me. This would be much more boring if I was doing this by myself. And I would, trust me. Uh, I do some boring stuff. Cheaper with switches. That's right, that's actually my life matter. Thanks for pointing that out. The, uh, the Legacy 4 actually has um, these tuning switches on, this, on the back of it. And I believe one of them is non-functional. I believe the switch number one doesn't do anything. That's my understanding. And switch number two does switch it between two different, two slightly different tuning modes. Um, and I'm actually interested to try those out. Let's try them in my ears. 
fit wise is good. This is a good fitting I am. Um, show it to you here. I just shook the camera, apologies for that. But yeah, like the Legacy 5, um, looks pretty much black in the air. Um, but you saw under light, it's got a pretty cool little pattern on it. Uh, isolation seems to be about the same as the Legacy 5, maybe slightly less, I don't know. But don't have them side by side, but that is a nice fitting I am. I'm, I'm pretty into that. The aesthetic of this, I'm pretty into as well. That's not too shabby, huh? Yeah. Let's see what else is going on in the chat. Appreciate the poop, the uh, encouragement for brute force. Sometimes, sometimes that's what it takes. Dandry saying, uh, hey Mark and everybody, it's 3 a.m. in Israel. Wow, you're up late. Um, go take a nap and see it tomorrow. Yeah, by the way, you got clairvoyance today. Ooh. That's, uh, that's an exciting new IM to get. Also from Thea Audio. But yeah, let me plug this thing in, start setting it up to get a measurement for the Thea Audio Legacy 4. Oh, Big Boss, you're right. Yeah, Rojo in Spanish. R, R equals Rojo, or Ere. Wait, is that right? Oh, wow. It's been a while since I, since I took my Spanish classes. Zaid with an interesting question. Which one looks better, the Legacy 4 or the Legacy 5? Just because we've got them both unboxed here. We might as well throw them both on screen so you can make that comparison directly. Which one is the better looking I am? Legacy 4 or Legacy 5 over here on the left? You can see, here's where I'm showing you that the pattern on the, on the 5 um, is definitely darker and it doesn't come through as much, but it does have maybe a, a deeper look to it. Like it feels like it's got more depth to it. Shell wise, the Legacy 5 feels a little bit on the, the, the fuller side, but they're, they're both pretty similar. Build quality is pretty similar between them too. But yeah, here, here you can kind of see like the, the shell size difference. Jeremy Kiros, you can't roll your R's. It's hard. I, I definitely have to think about rolling my R's. Um, and I probably do it pretty badly, but that's okay. Big Boss, you're thinking between the Blessing 2 and the Hyphen Sundara. Um, I prefer the Blessing 2. All right, let's go ahead and measure the Legacy 4. Now that we've got it out here, move the Legacy 5 to the side. Make sure I've grabbed the correct Thea audio. Um, plug it in about that much. We're gonna guess that that's where we're gonna get our 8K peak. Uh, and then we will jump over here to Rue and make our measurements. Uh, let me go ahead and hide the Legacy 5 and the Manger T for now. Give it a little bit of volume. We're going with three, three bars of volume. There you go, there is your Legacy 4. Uh, let's put a line here. It looks like we got our um, resonance peak basically exactly where we're looking for. And there you go, that's a, that's a pretty even mid-range. This one's getting into sort of V-shaped territory, right? If I pull up the Legacy 5 again for comparison, uh, these are almost the same color. Let's pick a different color so that it stands out a little bit more. All right, Legacy 4 is purple um, and Legacy 5 is this darker green color. Um, you can see that the Legacy 5, and they're both crossing over, are they cross? No, this is 500 hertz. So let me make them cross over. Oh, da, da, da. All right, make them cross over at around 500 hertz. We've been normalized. And here you can see that the Legacy 4 appears to be more of a V-shaped tune to it. And it's kind of a mild V-shape, like this is not an extreme. The, uh, the mid-range seems relatively even. I, I think a lot of it comes down to that the, uh, the pinna gain, sort of this ear gain region here, is not especially forward. 
Um, although it is interesting that it peaks at around 5K Hertz. Interesting. Um, but the Legacy 4 appears to be um, the more the more V-shaped, so it's probably gonna be a little bit more contrasty, uh, which probably will work better with some music, and the Legacy 5 will work better with some other music. Let me label this before I forget what I'm looking at. Uh, there we go. And you know what? While we're here, might as well um, might as well measure it with the switch flipped. All right? We talked about there being a switch on the Legacy 4. Um, I might need something smaller to flip that switch. Do it. Oh, look at this. I've got which uh, SIM card tray tool. I believe it's switch number two that actually does something. Move this in the camera view. So I'll flip up switch two from down to up. And let's see if that makes a difference in our frequency response measurement. So let's do that same exact thing we did before. I'll hide the legacy five for now. And there is the frequency response with the switch flipped up. So legacy four, two on. I'm gonna assume that's the on setting and that it was off by default. Um, it's interesting that actually decreased that contrast. So we were talking about the contrast between the upper mid range and the base, or sort of the upper mid range and the lower mid range that you see here in uh, the, the original tuning. And then here with the switch flipped up, it seems that that con I mean, the whole thing's gone up a little bit, um, but that looks a little bit more, a little bit less V-shaped. That's interesting. Okay. 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 So I've got a lot of IMs to listen to now. Um, and I guess I'm going to have to upload those measurements again. I'll throw them up on the squig link, squig.link if you want to check them out later. Uh, and I will grab measurements of I'll figure out how to grab measurements here of the sparks, but I guess that's gonna be the end of this video. Let me throw everything, just do, you know, nice little crowd shot, bring everything back into view so we can remember all the great times that we had on this two hour long live stream. Um, let's roll up the Legacy 4. But yeah, we're coming to the close of this live stream. Folks, I really appreciate y'all hanging out, um, chatting, having a conversation. Again, this is fun. Maybe I'll do, I don't know. I'm probably not going to find myself in a situation where I've got five IMs that I need to unbox and measure at the same time. But if I ever do, I know where to find you. You know where to find me. Um, but yeah, just uh, again, a quick round of applause for our, our stars here. This is the BGVP NS9 uh, $170 IM by Hi-Fi Go. Uh, it's got seven balanced armatures and two dynamic drivers, which is pretty, pretty interesting. That's a lot. That, Tune-wise, that was, let's go back to our frequency response. We can do that. We can go back to here uh, and so show you what frequency response of the NS9 looked like, uh, which was roughly that. So that looks like a bassy, a bassy IM. And then we can, the next thing that we opened up, I believe was the Mangard T, uh, $300 IM as far as I remember. Man, I had my notes here a second ago. Um, a hybrid IM like like the others. Um, this is, yeah, one dynamic driver and six balanced armatures. And as a recap, that was via Linsoul Audio. Um, link in the description down below. And as a recap of what that tuning looked like, let's turn off that and launch the Mangard. That's what the tuning of the Mangard T looks like. And then from there, we jumped into the Thea Audio Legacy 5. Also via Linsoul Audio, also link in the description down below if you want to check it out. Oh, I'm not even showing the table. Here we go. Thea Audio Legacy 5. Um, $250 IM, one dynamic driver, four balanced armatures. Uh, and as a recap, the, the, the frequency response of the Legacy 5 looks something like that. So actually not too different from the Mangard. I'll be interested to compare those two. Uh, and then finally, well, not finally. Um, we did look at the CA Audio Legacy 4, $195 IM, also via Linsoul Audio, link in the description below, etc. Uh, and the frequency response of that one 
looked like this. And then last but not least, I mean, this one wasn't the one that we actually did the last, but I don't have the frequency response of this to show yet. There is the Moondrop Sparks, which I'm very interested to find out what is, I mean, okay. They showed us what the frequency response looks like on the back of the box, but I gotta measure it myself. And that's what I'm gonna do after this video. So like I said, really appreciate y'all hanging out, uh, chatting. This has been fun, a different format of videos and hopefully it was as satisfying and, 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 and rewarding for you as it was for me. Um, but yeah, really appreciate y'all hanging out and that's gonna be the end of this live stream. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell so that YouTube lets you know when I'm live and then I'll see you in the next super review. Have a good one, folks.